Welcome to Seth Craft. I have a big box here. This is the pre-assembled version of the Millwright Carve King 2 CNC router. I'm gonna be setting this up over here on a wall-mounted table that I have built, and that's gonna be my CNC and laser station. I uh, reached out to this company and talked to them for a while. The owner was incredibly helpful at uh, providing information on their product, and uh, I'm definitely gonna be using this a lot here on the channel in the future. So let's go ahead and pull this out of the box and hopefully get our first project going here. One of the key selling points for the uh, Millwright company is that they have a large stock of product available here in the United States where it is all uh, produced. And so they are able to ship out their uh, equipment within well, two days for the non-assembled pieces and uh, within two weeks for the uh, pre-assembled. So instead of having to wait a month or more to get your machine in, you can actually have it in much quicker than that. Uh, this one shipped, I believe they're located in Georgia. Um, so that was uh, very close to me here in North Carolina. So anyway, let's go ahead and get this unboxed here. Well, one thing I can say so far is that this is well packaged and they anticipate that you'll have your uh, shipping be a little rough and so they have thoroughly uh, padded this unit. What a nice looking machine. I can tell that attention to detail has been given. It's got a nice uh, finish on every piece and uh, everything just seems to be laid out well. Now, of course, I haven't used it yet to know for sure, um, but I think that this machine is going to uh, serve the shop very well here for the future. So you can see the Millwright logo up there. It does use a Makita router which is really nice. Uh, so it has two boxes here in the kit. One of them is the control board, which is going to allow all of the different cables to connect up to it. So let me put this right over here. We can take a look at that. So this is the bottom side of it here. So, all right, there you go. So it has the USB connector there on the bottom and then all the little pins that will accept the limit switches and it'll accept the stepper motor inputs so all of that will be connected over here and it's got this uh, cable protector that will roll out as needed uh, but anyway so that will be over here on this edge and then i will have uh, my computer in here as well so uh, inside of the box that the makita router is in you've got uh, a little information on uh, troubleshooting and machine operation. That's just for the Makita. Here is the power cord there. Definitely need that. Uh, this uh, is also the other piece that came with the Makita router. We won't be using that at the moment. Um, but then there's your other half of the power cable. Comes with the USB cable. We'll need that. Here are some guides that can be used uh, here in the tracks. Um, so it did come with a single um, bit here for that router. And then that's just the wrenches for uh, the Makita there. Setting up the control box seems pretty simple. If you turn this upside down, you can see it has uh, the X motor, the Y1 motor, the Y2 motor, the Z motor. And then it has your limit switches over here for the uh, uh, different directions. So, uh, and all of the cables over here are actually labeled. So uh, it may be hard for you to see from there, but for instance, here's a Y motor, another Y. Over here, we've got the Z and the X. And then the limit switches also have indication on them. For instance, this one is a limit switch for the Z limit switch for X, 
and then down here is the Y. So everything is labeled on the cables and everything is labeled here on the control box. And of course, uh, power and then your USB as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, match these up. And I think I'm gonna leave this control box right over here. I wired up my control board, making sure the blue wires on all of the motor control cables were facing the Millwright logo on the box. So pretty simple there. Now this right here, this little chain, I have got set up where I want it. And I'm going to put a single screw back here to make sure that stays in place and doesn't scoot around. Now you notice when this was shipped, this right here is not touching the stepper motor and it should be. And so I need to go over here and use an Allen wrench to adjust this uh, flange bearing and uh, just basically pull this closer so that it will connect right here with this motor. I found this to be a 1.5 millimeter, which is a very small little Allen wrench. So if I move over here, you can see I'm lining it up with the stepper motor and just uh, pressing it in there. A couple weeks has passed since I was working with the Millwright CNC. I had to contact the technical support and ask a question. So I attempted to use Easel to um, hone in or zero out the machine and the limit switches were never being reached. So the Z axis was never being reached. And then these back here, uh, it was getting close, but never actually reaching it. So the problem was when this unit was shipped, the stepper motors back here got pushed in just a little bit. And so it was on both sides. I had to loosen up the screws here and just push this out and that straightened up this bar. And so everything is now operating properly. The same thing happened with the Z axis. It was never reaching that limit switch. And so I had to readjust everything for it to work. But now everything is up and running. Let's step over here to the computer and hopefully see some movement uh, on the CNC and start our first project. I've now turned the machine on and you can see that this Z axis is down and the uh, X and Y are kind of away from the limit switches. So let me go ahead and press the home button and it will bring the CNC machine to home. So here in the easel program, I can press home and we will watch this happen here. So there is a limit switch right here. It hits it once and then it's gonna slowly press up to lock that in. Now it's going to find these two at the same time. Once it finds it, it's going to do that again very slowly until it knows exactly where the limit switches are. There we go. And now it is homed into uh, the end position here. I'm here in easel where I'm gonna make my very first project. So let's grab a circle and move this towards the middle. And then let's go over here to the carve and it's gonna walk me through the steps. So. First of all, my measurement piece of material is uh, three quarter of an inch. Let's confirm that. It is locked down. The bit that I'm using is a quarter inch. Let's confirm that. Let's uh, walk this over to find the new position here. Okay, I have moved the bit to the corner or so I want it and then I've moved the bit down to the surface. I'm going to then use this as the new position. There we go, raised the bit slightly. I'm going to turn on the spindle. Things are about to get loud, but let's go ahead and do it anyway.
the job is now complete. It took about four minutes, which is actually what the program said it would do. Uh, so that was very nice to see. Let's check out this hole. So uh, very smooth down here, very smooth cut around here. Uh, there's a little bit of uh, material that's uh, barbed up there, but I mean, one touch with the sandpaper and that would be totally gone. Very cool. Well, that was my first CNC job and uh, I'm happy enough with it. I should uh, cut that out and frame it, put it on the wall. Um, as far as sawdust goes, yep, a good bit has been kicked out. Um, so definitely need to get the uh, shop vac attachment to go onto this router. Uh, I also think that I'm going to make a little uh, stand for this that will hold it up over here and give it plenty of room and that will basically hold that up and out of the way so it's not kicking back and forth on top of that rail. Very cool. Over here on the easel program, it just says uh, not good or troubleshoot and then uh, great. So you can uh, save your cut settings there. Um, I'm just going to click out of that and consider it done. I'm gonna use my little switch over here to turn off the machine and that will also uh, reduce the noise in here. Well, I'm very excited to see my first CNC project turn out nice. Special shout out to Millwright for sending over the Carve King 2. Now this is actually gonna be on my main Land the House channel for a while, and then I will be migrating all of my CNC work over to Seth Craft. So definitely stay tuned for more of that. If you want to check out more information on the Carve King 2, I will have a link to that in the description down below. The pre-assembled version is pretty awesome because you just set it up, maybe do a few little tweaks to get those uh, little threaded bars and things in the right spot, and then you just jump into your editing program and then get to work making stuff out of wood or metal or whatever you're cutting into. So definitely great. Uh, thank you so much for watching the Seth Craft channel. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.